Hi, everyone. And Hi, guys. Great news. This is amazing, isn't it? Where are you, Dan? I'm back in the church. I, I, I mean, this is amazing. It's still lockdown, but I'm back in the church. You're, you're a lockdown breaker. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really. Uh, Where are you, then? I, I, I am still at home. I'm just being very, very silly. Uh, I'm playing with, with, with the Zoom. Um, this is oh, my- disappointing. <laughs> disappointing. So, I thought I believed you for a while. This, what are we talking about today then? This is a top ten. We don't. I know there are lots of there are lots of channels who do top tens all the time. I think it's been about a year since we've done a top ten. Is it? God. Yeah. I, so I, in fact, we've we what we've done is 12, 12 months since we've done our top ten. Yeah. We like to, we prefer to do a top twelve anyway. So that's so that makes good sense. We like to do them all the time, and it becomes it can become a bit of a lazy format. But we thought it'd be quite yeah. Good. Especially as this is a a category which we really enjoy. I was really tempted to title this Top 10 Sexiest Fragrances because that's basically what I think. Quite literally, isn't it? But then we would get trolled by people that said we didn't mention Bleu de Chanel and, and Aventus. Well. Yeah, and masterpieces. Top 10 Animalic Fragrances. So what are we talking about when we say Animalic? Um, tigers, lions, bears. <laughs> giraffes. Yeah, we've got there's a lot of giraffes in this selection. Yeah, it's an underused note. I mean, I, I guess it, it's a big, it's a big, wide topic, isn't it? But basically, it comes down to certain notes, certain ingredients that are either derived from animal sources or to give synthetic impressions of of various things, musks and ambergris, etc. So I guess you've got you, yeah, you've got a kind of a, a few main ones. If we start with two. Um, which are reasonably common, um, which occur uh, without any animal harm, if you like. So they're, they're things that being secreted from an animal. So one big one is ambergris. Yeah. Excreted by, by a sperm whale. It then bobs around in the sea for a long time. It starts off quite dark and eventually gets lighter until it's been aged by the sea. Um, and it adds this uh, incredible kind of slightly salty, slightly sweet, slightly dry, warm, rich, amazingness. And it's been, you know, it's been used for a very, very... very it's, yeah, it's really clever how it's done. Because when you smell the raw product, you'd never guess how you can integrate that into a perfume and make a masterpiece. Yeah. And it can do an, an amazing thing. So the, the other one in the computer ambergris is, is hyracium, or African stone, as it's often... Uh, um, uh, referred to, I guess, which is a, a high rank, this is on a stone, and then that's collected. So, no harm. Yeah. And then, and think, again, it sits out in the sun cooking like ambergris. Exactly. So, it, it's essentially very, just cookery. Very, very kind of similar thing. Um, then, you've got this other category of ingredients which aren't used in large scale perfumery anymore. So, we're kind of talking about your, your musk, your uh, civet, your castorium, uh, that, things like that, which, which are. Um, Harming animals in order in order uh, to be used, so it's it's impossible for them to be used in large scale perfumery. So lots of fragrances, big designer fragrances, which at one stage did use um, real musk um, and real civet, no longer do because it's impossible to, to get it on a large scale. So there are yeah. lists uh, some real some fragrances, real civet, real musk, um, and real uh, castorium. Um, and then we're not going to speak. For a very long time about this because of worms, about the kind of the ethical question about having fragrances which do use real animalics. Um, we're not going to talk about lots because, and we don't know with great authority about every one of these perfumes. What we will say is a lot of these perfumes use these uh, real ingredients, do often say ethically farmed, ethically produced, and they are people who go to extraordinary lengths um, yeah. to find any ingredients. So whether it be jasmine, whether it be oo, whether it be Sandalwood, there's, all, there's also a big ethical question surrounding sandalwood. These are people who go to great lengths to try and find sustainable ethical ingredients. So I would, I don't know, but I would hope that if they do include um, musk or they do include civet or castorium, that it is ethical. Anyway, yeah, absolutely. Let's get stuck in. This is in order. 10 to 1. 10 to 1, yeah, uh, just for lunch. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, we've got, 
it's it's not really a, it's not really a list of the, it's like we always say the top ten animatic fragrances in the world. It's just what we own and what we enjoy. So yeah. forgive us for repeating ourselves, I guess. So kick us off with number ten. Number ten is um, the very wonderful Zing from Lartisan. Um, this is as an animatic, it's very interesting because it's just the faintest little hint of of a musk in the base with a leather accord, which gives it almost a slight elephant dung aspect. But it's meant to mimic being at a circus. Yeah, you just got, um, that, got that little like circus entertainer on the front. Just yeah, like, you got like a little tiger being ridden by a little lady. Um, <laughs> so I mean, they look like they're having fun. You, you know, promised us tigers. Things. You promised us tigers. Yeah, anything. absolutely. <laughs> Have you been watching that tiger program, by the way? No, no, no. It's absolutely mental. I urge you to watch it. <laughs> They're all crazy. Um, so there's Zing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an absolute masterpiece, I think, by Olivia Giacometti from 1999. And, I mean, you could argue that this was this was like a little bit of a, a gateway into animatics mm. and a bit of a gateway into some approachable niche using animatics. It's niche. Like, it's, it's been a birth of, like, exciting, creating niche, like, a free, oh. it's like a circus floor. Like, that's nuts. Yeah, and you've got toffee apple sweetness in there, a bit of kind of candy aspect, candy floss. Um, and Which she does all of that without it being cloying. But just a hint of poo as well. A little hint of this elephant dung in the base, um, which I think on the, on the modern stuff is really toned down, but on this bottle, yeah. it's, it's really beautifully judged. And she's got this thing that she does in Philosophos and Tea for Two, of it being quite transparent. Mm. Yeah. You'd think it would be a really heavy scent. It's actually a very yeah. light, elegant sort of thing. It's it's quite it's quite amazing how you can make that perfume with those notes perform in that way. Real brand new magazine vibe to that as well. You get that? Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Like printer paper or something like that, you know. I was in fact reading my GQ magazine this morning and I put my nose in and had a smell. Because it's one of my favourite things. Mm. And yeah, this is this is it. It's so a even, it's a slightly vanilla-y if you wiped an elephant's bottom with a, a brand new magazine. Yeah. And yeah. then you stick a, a label on it and you can sell it as a little, one of those little free samples that they put. Magic, magic, magic. Yeah. Right, that's number two. So that's what number nine? Number nine is one which we both own. Yeah. Ba, ba, ba. It's the Long Run by a Pierre Guillaume. This is one which Beautiful I got stuff. quite early on into my... Uh, journey into niche, I bought. You did, didn't you? I remember. It's really, it's one of those first, you know, it's one of those ones which I remember looking at the price and thinking, oh, I would never spend that. And, oh, it's, it's really good, isn't it? It's kind of like an animalic Coromandel. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, it's boozy, ambery, um, lanterny, patchouli, but there's also some filth. So I think L'Homme Crofort means, um, <sighs> Or love and shadow, it's like beastie shadow or like a dirty shadow. Yeah. Or like fox like shadow or something. And and it's got this feeling of naughtiness. If you if you if you like Coromandel, you will you get a um, slight association, the kind of benzoin, patchouli, beautiful lanternum. But this turns this has got this, this filthy fuzz to it as well. It is a fuzz, isn't it? You're right. It's just on my finger there. It's it's got a real, yeah, it's got a real kind of hug to it. In a way, it's got similarities to Bengal Rouge by Papillon as well. Yeah, it's that absolutely. Kind of, this is definitely, this is a real, um, you know, hug. This is a real, like, night in. This is why, you know, we should have called this list of sexy fragrances because it's really got... It's so sexy. Um, but it's, it's... It almost, that, it almost smells like it has a texture. Like it it yeah. smells like a multi-layered duvet. You've just thick. been sleeping in and yeah, doing or other things. Or it's layers of fur or something like that. But it's definitely something yeah. you, you can like wrap yourself in and really, really kind of hug around you. Um, it's definitely a relative of um, thingy, isn't it? Of uh, Bengal Rouge. Yeah. But it's so nice as well. A lovely warmth. Coming back to it, having you know bought it, when, but, uh, but very early on in my journey to Nice when it was like not really smelt anything like this. I liked I liked Coromandel, and so maybe... It was just a natural kind of separate from Coromandel. But to come back to it, having smelt lots of salty things in between, oh. or working its magic, which is it's why... It's so good. 
And mm-hmm. I, I think a house that we don't we don't talk about that much, do we? But I think yeah. they actually have some good things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, um, it's a crazy yeah. race, which I own. Um, I That's great stuff. Magic stuff, magic stuff. Right. Onwards. Number, Number eight. eight, what do we have? Number eight. Now, this is a, quite a new purchase. This is Civet Look at that. Uh, Cheaper by um, uh, Melek. Melek. It now comes in a new bottle. This one I got, um, I think I only got it at Christmas, but it's, it's a very young house. Uh, very kind of small, uh, indie kind of scale perfumer that is uh, just, I think he's still just selling on Etsy. Um, is he based in Canada or somewhere? No. I can't remember if it's North America or Canada. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry if I think. But somewhere over, somewhere yeah. over the... the <laughs> yeah, it's the other, the other side of the Atlantic. But this is somebody who does use um, uh, civet. I know he's got lots of documents uh, relating to the ethical production of civet. I'm not going to go into it. Uh, the civet he's used. I'm not going to talk about loads. Let's just talk about what it smells. It smells this is probably been maturing in the bottle as well since I smelled it last. Yeah, so we've done we've done a review of this. I might post it yeah. in below, but I wore it to remind myself a couple of days ago. And whew, <laughs> that's good stuff, isn't it? If, it's the kind of thing that if you picked up a like 70 year old bottle of perfume and you thought, oh I hope it still smells amazing. This is what it will smell like. Yeah. And as we said in the video, what it does not smell like is someone selling on Etsy who's just bought some expensive ingredients and matched them together. It doesn't smell like that. It's extraordinarily elegant and it feels like this old school, rich, sheep crap. Again, actually, this is a, it's a relationship to Bengal Rouge. I mean, maybe not surprising because we're doing an animatic list that. It's similar to Lombrophobe, and then it feels it's got a big hug. It's not sharp, which sometimes synthetic civet comes across as sharp. Like yeah. Even in Mouchard de Monsieur, which I adore, it, it, it feels there's a slight sharpness to the civet there. Whereas here, there is something very, very animalic, but incredibly warm and embracing in the way there's, there's rose and there's a bit of forest here and sandalwood. And, the whole thing's just a great big sexy hug and it's beautiful. I remember, I remember it being like absolute prime quality and I remember, I remember thinking, I bet this was what Galan smelled like, you know, back in, back in 1889. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely wonderful. I need to check out the, the rest of his house because there are so many perfumes I'm interested in yeah. by, by him. There's a, there's a sort of peachy oak moss thing. Yeah, I you can a there's, a, there's a great sort of spice, woody, spicy shaving thing. Yeah, there's a big nod to the past. Yeah, great stuff. Seven. And so number seven. Um, is oh, were you still chat? Were you still on Civic Cat? Did I steal no, her in there? Ah, look at that. This is under my skin by Francesca, um, Yankee. We love her as well, don't we? It's impossible. Well, it's, it's very difficult when doing a, an animatic list not to have a lot of fragrances which look to the past because that's when you know, lots of these animatic ingredients. And I think as well, let's you know, I will just say parts, we've talked about this on our channel before, but I think part of my love of old fashioned fragrances and animatic fragrances is having grown up being a teenager in the 90s, or kind of like you know, becoming a teenager in the 90s, at the time of Acro de Gio and L'Odyssey, when everything was aquatic and, aquatic and, and clean and calony, watermelony, I want I, I wanted something which isn't like that, which is dirty and rich and yeah. complicated and mature. And, and then that's what this is. I mean, under my it's skin. absolutely heavenly stuff. So I think I mean I, I, I this has got some musk, castorium, and I think some ambergris. I, don't, I imagine they're probably all synthetic, but it's just magical. And this is one of those fragrances that when you first, even from first spray, it feels like you're, you're, you're smelling it off of somebody's skin. Yeah. It feels like Absolutely. it's taking on the kind of warmth of their body. And almost as if like somebody sprayed a few different fragrances maybe, and they've spent the whole day walking around in the sun and it's kind of mingled with their... Humanalic. I've made a new word. Humanalic. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, I guess uh, an- animalic sounds negative because it sounds like a dirty badger. But but, an- but humanalic. I mean, <laughs> this is a very a very 
clean but very furry badger. And there's, there's a kind of sweetness which kind of really segues, there's a kind of honeyed aspect which really kind of segues between that animalic, or sorry, humanalic, we're saying now, humanalic warmth. Bit of aura, which you use. I, rem I remember it being quite, having a, like a slight sherbet thing as well. Sherbet's not the right word, but I like a, a sort of powdery quality. Yeah, yeah, definitely a kind of powdery, yeah. But... Oh, it's... Sort of opulence. Absolutely addictive, beautiful, magical stuff. I mean, all of her fragrances are very humanalic. Yeah. <laughs> Dark Knight, uh, uh, what have you got under my skin? The beach. Lover's Tail. Not Sex on the Beach, Sex on the Sea. <laughs> Sex and the Sea. Yeah. And there's a Neroli edition of that, which I really enjoyed. Yeah. But they're all... She's great. They're... She's done a leather recently, which I really want to smell. But I don't, I don't think it's around no, anymore, is it? Not, not, yeah. It's Queer mm -hmm. Soya or something. Wonderful, wonderful house. Right, right. Next. So next... Uh, an, all natural, an all natural fragrance. An all natural fragrance by Anna Zorikina. I've talked about this before, but, you know, I have a... I have a very small collection of things, and this is this is one of my favourites. So it's a tiny little bottle because this is how they come. In, well, in the shop I bought it, eight mil, um, and it, ha it has this amazing, beautiful, like bright opening of bergamot and sort of smoky, like a sort of really smoky lapsang sujong tea. But then it gets this sort of filthy leather. And it's, it's real castorium in here. It's real civet. You've got labdanum, which just gives it a, a really enveloping, hugging sort of feel. It's, I mean, it's really dirty. Again, a very human alley kind of smell. You know. It's really dirty. Can you give me a little but spray? A little spray. Just there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm not gonna, actually, I'm not going to spray it because it's so expensive. But, it, I mean, yeah, this little bottle is about 60 pounds. And it's eight mil, so you know a fifty mil of this would cost you a lot. But it's so good, and it's you know it's an eau de parfum. Um, but again, she's done a few things which I really love. But we're talking about you know the quidivity is something in a style of fragrance which has been around for a long, long time. Yeah, it's a genre in itself, isn't it? Started yeah. by Chanel, probably. This is Chanel, I know, but there's a Guerlain one as well, isn't there? So I don't know if the Guerlain one. There is a Guerlain. Um, um, and it's, I mean, it's interesting because it's it's obviously it's obviously been tried by a few a few other houses over the years, and I think they all get away from the origins, which are meant to be slightly mm. uncomfortable. Yeah, it's it's meant to be like you know hard, warm leather in freezing cold snow. The castorium, um, the castorium does create this. Leather. I've got some kind of just it's castorium and sandalwood little uh, at all, and it's almost. I mean, I can't quite wear it on. It's it's so intense, but yeah. Dorium does give this extraordinary boozy leather kind of quality, and we've, yeah. we've smelt some castorium, some dried castorium pods, and it's mm. which you know kind of untinctured just the pods themselves, and they do create this amazing leathery boozy <sighs> addictive. You get it in Yatagan as well. It's yeah, oh, it's fantastic. What about for that for, for this list? But I think, I mean, I think these these perfumes, some of them are not easy to wear by any means, but. I, that takes you to another question of are all perfumes meant to be easy going things that you can just throw on and mm. go out and about to work? I mean, well, well, we can't do that at the moment anyway. No. Um, but, well, you know, they're, they're works of art in themselves. And that thing, if that thing paints a landscape maybe of, of a different time mm. when things were tough, then, you know, I'm all for it. Absolutely. I've not, I've not worn it very often, but I will. Number five. Number five, what do we have for number five? Uh, no, no, number five, I don't have my bottle on, which is annoying. I think I've left it in Gloucester. Um, but well, Zalame, Dan's going to work his magic on me. <laughs> but this is one, even though Joe doesn't have his bottle to show, we really wanted to, to, to include. We mentioned, yeah, it's a real masterpiece. Already, we've mentioned Bengal Rose a couple of times, and we could have included that, but we decided we only wanted to have one fragrance um, per house, and we thought if you're only going to have one animalic fragrance for Papillon, it's going to be Zalame. Yeah. Oh. I think we described in our, in our, our video that Bengal Rouge is really cuddly sexy, whereas um, Zalame is sit on my face sexy. It's kind of. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's really, 
raunch. And in fact, I don't know if this is I don't know if this is even possible, but I'm gonna send Dan later on a clip that this perfume reminds me of. And it's in Zalame, it's a production of Zalame. Um, but it's a particular moment and it's a particular chord. And that's that perfume to me. I think I know the one. I think I know the one you mean. Yeah. You played to me before, haven't you? I have, have yes, exactly. Yeah, this is the opera by Richard Strauss. Um oh, and it's it's just <coughs> chaos and dirty funk and vintage opulence all at the same time. And it must be like I, I think there's a slight relation to kind of vintage opium by Yves Saint Laurent, isn't there? But there's yeah. There's there's hyrax in this, this African stone, and it's it's one that I feel you know when I've, I've tested it a few times, I've had some samples, and I just I love it, and I just think just don't know if I can quite wear it because I think it's just a it's a little bit too much for me. Then I should just and that's coming from you. I know the, <laughs> you like the big and the big and punchy yeah. things. I feel the same. But it's, but it's 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 a sort of experience. You you wear it as an experience, like a. You were, a I mean, day behind the Concorde cockpit or something. Yeah, absolutely. But magical stuff from a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful house. Um, yeah. Number four. Another, I'm excited about this. N- another magical house. Uh, and one of my, you know, one of my favourite fragrances from one of my favourite houses. This is Siberia <sighs> um, Part 2 from Arisha Dore. So this is real uh, musk, Siberian musk. And yeah, I think I'm torn between this Ottoman Empire and Russian news is my favourites from this house, but this is just okay. This is kind of head and shoulders above pretty much everything that's being put out there today, I think, isn't it? Just in terms of boldness. It just is I mean, it just is this tiny, musky masterpiece. There's this explosion of kind of bright broken at the beginning. But it just feels, and when, I, when I've described before, it feels what I imagine if you went kind of skiing through a Siberian forest on a crystal clear day, bright, bright, bright sun, but everything covered in snow. There are all these pine trees and there are deer racing through the woods, which you're kind of chasing after. That's what it's not, and it's just, oh, it's just amazing. It really is. It's so, it's just such an exciting fragrance. Yeah, it really is wonderful, isn't it? I, I remember smelling it for the first time and I was just blown away. My, you know, my head almost came off my shoulders. Same with Russian Ooze, same with Ottoman Empire, yeah. same with Bai Calgary, Taif Rose. I mean, an absolute master. Even, among, even amongst all of those, this is, oh, it's a, and it's somehow incredibly wearable. And again, as we said with Ottoman there's a definite kind of nod to the past. I feel I'm, I'm taken back to, I don't know, in the 70s, maybe there were, there were fragrances that smelled like this, but no, no, that aren't, which is why it's, it's, it's expensive, but it's a rarity. It's why we need perfumers like Russian Adam to keep, got this keep going perfume. where no one else will go. You know, even just the odd occasional spray gives me so much pleasure. It's just yeah. an amazing. It's wonderful, thing isn't it? Thing to have. So I, I mean, I'm excited to see what they come up with next. I'm always excited to, to see what he does. And it's an interesting, like going back to the interview question, he, Russian Adam is, so he's used real musk here. He's someone who doesn't use civet. There are other fragrances here which uh, use real civet. He doesn't use civet because he hasn't found an ethical source of civet which he's happy with. So he is somebody who thinks about the ethical um, source of his products. Provenance. Yeah. So anyway, number. Love it. So number three. Um, number three, we have briefly mentioned, haven't we? Um, not today, but in the past. My um, by Bogue, Bogue. Okay. From from uh, Milan. Now from this thing Gardoni. is by Antonio. Yeah, Antonio Gardoni, wonderful man, architect, perfumer, all round genius. And this thing smells like I mentioned on my collection video the other day. It smells like a real old. I mean, it's again, like a lot of these, an, an old classic vintage masterpiece, full of everything under the sun: big florals, big yeah. sandalwood, civet. A really dirty, dirty rose. I mean, it's it's a sort of high as well, isn't there, which kind of gives some like brightness. Yeah, it's like um, it's like a Chypre extraordinaire. On the terrible use of the word there, but, but, but uh, this is a Chypre extraordinaire. Compared to, compared to yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. It's like 130, 140 quid. 
and it, I, you know, it's one of the best things I've ever, I've ever bought. Um, and it's not when I smelt it on, on you, I mean, obviously, you know, whenever I see you, you wear a lot of these amazing fragrances, but it's one of the ones that, you know, when I walk into a room and you've got that on, it just goes, yeah. like, it's, just, it's, it's, wow. It's enormous. Like, <laughs> it's, and it's, I mean, it, again, like, like Mem, it changes on me every time. Yeah. Every time. It's a, it's a different thing. You know, it's a real, it's a real full scale opera. Yeah. And you know, ten minutes it does one thing, an hour it does something else. The following yeah. day it'll do something else if you wear it again. It's, I don't know why or how he does that. He's just an old factory wizard. I mean, again, I thought like Mem was one which I, I almost was tempted to include because although it's just a, just a, it is a lavender fragrance. I get this real, real animalic vibe from Mem. Sometimes, not always though. I kind of get different, different experiences on different occasions. And, it can be very animatic when it wants to be, though, can't it? It's actually, interesting. Right. But I, I love this house. I, I should mention as well, I, this, yes. this bottle that I bought happened, I only noticed this a little while ago. Um, it's the 1,000th bottle ever mm. made. Mm. And so it came with a little card saying, congratulations, you know, well done for just being lucky. Um, and, you know, you know, yeah, saying, I haven't actually seen this. So it says all of that sort of jazz there, and to get in touch. So it's that's bottle that's bottle number one thousand. And so Antonio is. I don't know. I don't know. It's sort of lost in the traffic at the moment because of the the corona. But he's sending me a special sort of limited edition of this, Amazing. which I'm very excited about. And there's a version that includes some other notes and some some ramping up of the tuberos. And yeah. So I'll be really excited if that if that ever comes. I'm yeah. hoping it hasn't been stolen by the people at the post office because that really will piss me off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, great house, great masterpiece, I think. Right, we've had a lot of good animalic and humanalic. What do we say? What's human? Humanalic. I don't know if that's a yeah, potential word. But we're back to animals on this one. And we're back to Ooh. one of our favourite um, animals. <laughs> one of our favourite films from Prin Lomos. Ah, yeah. His new house of print, this is Mriga. So Mriga is Sanskrit for deer. And the reason why this is high, and the reason it's higher than French Siberian musk, is this is a synthetic civet, a synthetic musk, um, which I cannot believe because I've never smelt. When I first smelt this, the thing which leapt to my mind was Siberian musk. It smells, yeah. the, it smells so, so, so close to it, but it's not real musk, it's synthetic. It's, it's ab- very clever, isn't it? <sighs> it's, am- it's just amazing. I've got to say, there's a lot in common with, with Siberian musk. There's a kind of bit of brightness at the, at the outset. Where this uh, sees you differently, there's a kind of a soil accord to this, a kind of damp earth, and, and I feel as opposed to the kind of bright wood of Siberian musk, this is very much dark. I mean, you can kind of see, if you look at the kind of juice colours of, of, of these two, that kind of give, tells you a bit of the story. Um, that this, this Mriga just... I can't, believe, I can't believe it's a synthetic musk, and it kind of almost made me reevaluate what I thought about musk, because I thought, well, oh, musk, mm. the real stuff is so much better. What, whatever he's using in here is magic. It's so... It's really, really, it's so sexy. It's so and he really, he really takes his time with his ingredients as well, doesn't he? He really, he wants to source the very best stuff he can get. Mm. Even, if, you know, even if he's making, he's making a synthetic uh, musk, mm. it's, you know, he's going to do it really, really well. And what else I like this oud in this? Otherwise, it's not going out. Get, yeah. Like, I think there's Vietnamese oud in it, working its magic. But also what, in a way, and again, why this, this is higher than Siberian musk is, Siberian musk, absolutely enormous, like extraordinary fragrance, but it feels somehow familiar to some old things. Whereas Mrega, because of the, the soil and the dark green woods, kind of feels a little bit more original. Yeah. I loved it. I need to, I need to buy that, actually, because I, I smelt them all when they came out. And we've done it. We've done it's it. really wonderful. And I'll, I'll, put, I'll put a link. I'll try to link all, 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 all the videos in this, but um, magic. So... What, number one. What 
it's number one after thinking about all these great, all these expensive is what? So, I mean, it, you don't have to spend a lot of money. You just have to buy a bottle of Kuros. <laughs> because this stuff was the mainstream in the 80s. This was your high street shelf. And yeah. animatic wasn't a niche thing. And we it did. wasn't even an aspect of perfume. It there's, was just a given. There's a little, there's a slight caveat, isn't there? To keeping this one as, as our number one. There is. In, in the way I kind of, um, I don't know if you saw, when was it? It was about six months ago. We did a video in which we blind spots and sample, which was, was a 1980s chorus. Yeah. Joe has got. Which is there. That's from 1980 something. Um, I think it was and 1984, if I remember rightly. Just, and it, which is a really long time ago. It is, it is a long time. It's a really long time ago. Um, this, I mean, just smelling that box there and then smelling this is extraordinary. Go on, give it, give it's, it a spray. Give it a spray. Or give, go on, give yourself a spray. I'm going to put a little bit on, my, on the back of my hand here. Experience it vicariously. Oh. Do you know, it's so funky. It's unbelievable. It's so funky. I mean, this is really what we're voting for, I think, isn't it? But the, the new stuff is still good. It, that's a really decent perfume there. And but it's, I, you know, I'm it's proud to wear that. And it's, it's, you know, it's designing fragrances when they're producing. Oh. Not that you think. I just couldn't believe it's inconceivable a designer would a mainstream company would release a fragrance like that because it's so old. It's, it's, it's crazy. It seems crazy now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the sort of the urinal sort of urinal cake aspect and the, um, the sort of sweaty body aspect, but then this beautiful patchouli and earthiness behind it, quite leathery, but quite bright as well at the same time. It's, it's a sort of a, a series of, of balances all the way. It's a masterpiece. I mean, it is, it's a masterpiece. It really I mean, what's, what's on my hand here is an absolute five-star killer. No, no doubt about yeah. it. Oh. And to think that, you know, stuff like this was just on your high street. I mean, I, if I knew this when I was a young boy, I would have just bought this yeah. for life, a lifetime supply and kept it. Yeah. You know, you can still buy vintage bottles of this. Like a hundred quid on Etsy. I mean, but they're not a hundred quid. I mean, I've, I've watched a few on eBay, and if you get like, if you get an unopened hundred mil, you know, you're talking over two hundred quid. Yeah. Um, and also, and then also, it, you just don't know, do you? Or, or anything, you know, it might be like, it might, it might be actually full of wee. Yeah. Of wee. It's it's so, funny because it's it's like it's so nostalgic smelling this. Yeah. But I don't I don't remember ever finding it. Animatic at the time, no, I just lo I loved it, which makes me think that actually these animatic notes were were so mainstream that they didn't shock yeah. us. We just it's, loved it's, the perfume it's, it's for the perfume. The period of the kind of like nineties, noughties, when everything became bland and aquatic and dull. Yeah, and then you, and then we went through a fruit truly girl phase, and, and now now things are a big woody phase for ages. Hopefully, yeah, like. These uh, Corona times will be the you know the dawning of a new animalic era. Something will something will change. Humanalic era. That's not going to be very popular. Those are our top that. ten. So we've got yeah we we've got a nice it list. Really, it was really difficult to do this list. We've got a few um, honourable mentions. Do you want to go first with your honourable mentions? Yeah, I mean this little bad boy here, Hyrax, which we talked about before. Yeah. And you know this, I mean this this could easily be. I know it sounds like such an American cliche. This could easily be number one on anyone's list. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's a real masterpiece, again. And mm. just looking at the, the animatic stuff you've got in here, you've got the African stone. So you've got that, you've got that going on. You've got Styrax, which, which gives it a, a gluey, leathery thing. Mm. You've got musks, again, in the base. So there's a, there's a lot going on here. And then you've got, you've got blackberries and peppers and fruits, amber, benzoin, tonka, sandalwood, whiskey. I mean, there's a, there's a lot going on in here. Amazing. And yeah, I love it. And I, you know, it was hard to find a place to put this, but and also, I think I think it's a great bold, cutting edge approach to animalics and perfumery. In a, um, a house with a name like Zoologist, a lot, a lot of the aren't actually that animalic, but that is the most 
animalic. That probably is the most animalic. Possibly camel or something like that as well that has a slight fecal it's, aspect. It's not quite the same thing as Hyrax. I mean, yeah, that knocks your socks off a little bit. Also, we've put Hyrax in, it's been in quite a few of our lists, isn't it? So we thought. Yeah, that was yeah. in one of my summer lists because when yeah. I was feeling mental. <laughs> right, what else have we got? Um, also, Muscabi by Bortnikov, oh, which. Um, there it is. And it's little pouch. Um, and it's it's lovely. And yeah, it's it's really the ambergris and the deer musk in the in the base of this one. Um that's really beautiful. And you've got you've got a kind of a lovely vanilla sweetness, but also a really bright, beautiful citric opening as well. It brings to mind Jiki and that and that sort of world to me a little bit. Exactly what it's gonna say. It's got that real classic old school smell, hasn't it? Yeah, I love it. I think it's really beautiful stuff. And it's, it's the only Bortnikov I have, but I'm, I'm going to get I'm going to get more and some soon. I hope. Good. And you had a kind of you had a, a cheapie which you, you had to... yeah a little cheapie which I think we've sort of discussed a little bit with Mai and Zalame, but sent by Theo Fennell. Um, and I don't know if you can see it, but that is the price. <laughs> and I mean, it's really great. It's it's like a really dirty rose. The opening is a little bit rough, but not for very long. And in fact, this is a five star from Luca Turin. Um, it's it's a dirty floral. Um, Amazing. Bit of saffron cumin going on again, which gives it that slight bo thing, but then beautifully balanced by the rose. I love it. I think it's great. And for seven ninety nine, I think it's a steal. Winner. Right. Um, I've got um, few. This is one I was so close to putting in. It's one, in a way, it's weird that we haven't talked about this more. This is Amber Aurea by oh, um, yeah. It's one of my very, very uh, favourite fragrances. Genius. So obviously animalic, but this is just, it's all about amber. And uh, I, I would say this is definitely my favourite amber fragrance ever. And whenever I get into kind of online discussions about this, people say, oh, you know, about the best amber fragrance ever. People say, oh, I don't like it. It's got this kind of dry, salt rider. And I was like, well, that's because it's got real ambergris, which just, it just makes this magic happen. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful, that saltiness, I think. So amazing. It's also probably the longest lasting thing I've ever smelled in my life. Yeah. <laughs> like days and days and days, and it's just, it's just labdanum and ambergris, and oh, what is not to love? And it's so sticky as resinous as well. You, yeah. you just, you know that you're wearing a perfume of the highest concentration. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, Quite linear in a way, but actually the ingredients yeah. that you get are so fantastic. Yeah. That it just it goes and goes and goes. As with all coming around. Another one which is um you know crazy good. Uh, crime and punish one yeah. we've recently done a video on this and and you could you, you could easily say, well, this is a much higher quality frame than some of the ones that we've got on the list. And yeah, maybe so and it's you know, must have agree the most expensive ingredients in the world is amazing. I think it's just one of those things that I haven't lived with it. The 10 on these lists are ones we've really lived with and loved and experienced. And they are our 10 favorites. 10 favorites. Not necessarily the best in the world. So this will make the list this time, but I'm sure it will in the future. And then... Oh, absolutely. Joe mentioned as well a Bortnikov. I've got a Bortnikov. This is so Winston. Uh, ah, yeah. A, a, a tobacco tea tuberose. Um, uh, fragrance, which doesn't smell very much like I would imagine when it's successful to smell at all. <laughs> As I worn it more and more and more, I found that it's just an absolute ambergris bomb. At the very end of the dry down, it just becomes this salty, dry, uh, kind of slightly uh, sweet, kind of thick, amazing stuff. And, and it's amazing how it kind of transforms. It's such an interesting, interesting fragrance. I think the problem, in a way, it's kind of bad marketing because it's not you think of Sir Winston, you think it's going to smell like cigars and brandy and it's going to be dry and leathery and serious. It's not that. It's sweet and, and in kind of enveloping, treacly, sexy, beautiful. It's great stuff, though, isn't it? I remember loving that when I smelled it. So those are our t- top 10 animalic stroke humanalic. <laughs> Um, they are just our 10 favourite, and I'm sure there are lots yeah. which we haven't included, and we love trying them, so 
Because you've got some which we are obviously missing and you want us to try. Or you don't want us to try, but you think we should try. Let yeah. Me. Hit us up. That's amazing. Um, of course. Yeah. Well, there's a reason why it's number one. Okay. Absolutely love it. So, well, until next time. Bye. Peace and